Greetings, Guardians. My name is Bife here. So, the Into the Light live stream for the first time has just finished. There's going to be two more live streams at the same time next week and the week after, and this time they were showing off Onslaught. This is a quick look at what we learned as far as the narrative and the lore is concerned from these live streams, which was actually a point of focus in some of the conversations, which is always nice to see. Of course, there is the big question which overlapped all of this, which was quite simply, is the image that they promoted this with hype or was it happening? And as it stands out, it is actually happening. The Last City is being invaded by the Witness. That is apparently a key narrative focus of the update. And as it turns out, the Witness is sending all its armies after us to prevent us from going through the portal. It simply needs to hold us in place until it can complete the final shape. The Witness's ships have literally landed on Earth and are starting to transform and terraform the Last City even as we're defending it. I say landed, but, you know, close in orbit, constantly there, very much in the range of bombardment, deploying troops, it's not a good situation. Regardless, we need to defend the last city while Crow, Mara, and Osiris work to forge a bridge into the Traveler's Pale Heart. And most importantly, when we do go through that portal and follow the bridge to the other side, the last city will be left defenseless, so we need to start laying defenses for our absence right now. Enter Onslaught, the game mode that was shown off in this particular livestream. The Witness is attacking, the last city is going to need to be defended. We need to set up those defenses. And so Onslaught kind of combines the two. It is basically a horde mode slash firefight, which I know some players have been asking for for a very long time. Defenses can be constructed and placed with scrap, and they'll persist throughout the match unless they're destroyed. The narrative point of this is also to give us the sense that we are building up the city's internal defenses as we go. So yeah, whilst we will be gone on the expedition into the Pale Heart, the defenses will stay behind. Shax is going to be our vendor for this, and as we open up every single version of Onslaught, his Red Jax, aka the combat frames that he works alongside to clear Crucible Arenas, are going to drop into the city with us and secure our first deployment zone. In these deployment zones, we will be deploying a hub called the ADU. I believe it stands for the Automated Defense Unit. And the point of the ADU is to allow you to construct defenses, including those Vanguard Pattern Scorpion turrets, which we saw in the promotional art as well. Yes, those do exist. You can also deploy sweeper bots as a bit of a distraction, which is... I mean, thematically, that's just a little bit silly and I love it. And then also there are tripwires, but none of this is particularly important, aside from the idea that you are building all of these defenses up in defense of the last city itself. And you will move through all the different crucible arenas that have been used for this particular game mode. And yes, as best we know, it looks like these are going to be crucible arenas. Considering that we're defending the last city whilst doing all this, I imagine that there's going to be a few maps which are likely to appear. In my mind, Bannerfall and Twilight Gap are key maps that will sit alongside all of this. So if you're looking at what other maps we might get, just narrow it down in that particular vein. I have to imagine that those are two of the ones that are going to appear. If there will be any others, uh, I don't know. But hey, we'll figure it out when we get there. Jax being our vendor for this particular game mode is also really fitting, and if you heard the mention of Twilight Gap and your ears perked up, then you probably know why. Jax has defended the city before, and has successfully defended it from three simultaneous attacking fallen houses at Twilight Gap. His defense of the city is a legendary thing. He is well versed in it, and he certainly has the forces to make sure that he can aid you in doing it so him being the vendor for this particular activity is actually very fitting. I imagine there will be some pretty important lines of dialogue from Shax which will give us an idea of what's going on, and it will allow us to basically look into this activity as almost revisiting a little bit of Shax's heritage as far as the activity itself is concerned. Defending against terrible odds and somehow being victorious is something he's done before, so you're following a little in his footsteps. But Shax is not just sitting on the sidelines alone, he is actually working actively to help us. He may not be in the actual activities with us, but he is opening his coffers and unleashing weapons that were banned from the Crucible for being too dangerous. We can now use them to fight the Witness given that it is a greater threat. 
This is part of the premise behind why certain weapons are returning, and it might also be a premise for other unique weapons to be returning over others. I don't know if new exotics or exotics that have been advertised as launching with the final shape are actually being included here, but this would be an excellent moment to see the return of Red Death. The term banned weapons was mentioned here, and that applies explicitly to the lore of Red Death. Those of you who don't know, this pulse rifle, of which Crimson is the little brother. Yeah, it's a banned weapon according to the Vanguard because it is a Guardian killer. It has killed Guardians. The exact explicit reasoning why was never truly given, but it's clear that this weapon has always been kept under lock and key except for the fact that, well, a ton of us were able to use it back in Destiny 1. What they'll have done to change Red Death isn't clear, but I mean, it was a menace back in the day, it was one of my favorite weapons, so I imagine that this is something that might be coming along. Then again, this might also just be the justification for weapons such as Midnight Coup and Blast Furnace returning. Apparently, Shax is working with figures from the past to bring back more of these old weapons, and that might just mean that this is the involvement of Ada-1 in this particular process. Because again, lots of the weapons that seemingly are being returned are from the Black Armory. So that'll be nice. Assuming that is the case, it means that Ada has more of a story going forward. Which I'm a fan of, because Ada I think is an underrated character. These returning weapons also, for us lore nerds, will be even more interesting, because there's new lore attached to these new versions of the weapons. So, whilst there is going to be the old version of Midnight Coup, with its old lore that talked about the Midnight Coup, there may be a new version of Midnight Coup with new lore attached that tells us about this period of time, or about something else that is relevant in this moment as we defend the Lost City. Now, here are some other notes that talk about the narrative. The Witnesses' armies are attacking the city, but that will predominantly in Onslaught appear as just the Fallen and the Hive. The Fallen that we're going to face are kind of interesting in this regard, because it's not mentioned if they are House of Salvation Remnants or Wrathborn, but I imagine that will be clarified as time goes on. There are still forces out there that we could probably find, which are independent fallen houses that have fallen under the sway of the Witness, but regardless, that's something we'll need some clarification on. I think it's also worth remembering that in the livestream, it was said that there was no way we could physically fight all of the Witness's forces, and so setting up these defenses in the last city is necessary, as is taking the fight to the Witness so that we can stop it entirely. Of course, there's also something more to be said about the Hive side of things. It's not clear if this is a bunch of Hive that have just fallen under the Witness's sway. My assumption is that they would be from the broods of Zivu Arath, if we do see her being directly commanded by the Witness to do this, then maybe she has taken a bit of a back seat and is no longer truly in command of her brood. If that is so, there are big consequences. I imagine that will get discussed. It was not discussed on this livestream. Apparently, there are Taken who will fight in other parts of the Into the Light update. Onslaught is just one activity and they won't be featured there as best we know. However, the Taken will still be about. Given that they are the elite shock troops of the Witness and the forces that align themselves with it, I would imagine that there is something else going on. The Witness is probably deploying them as a means of stopping us from getting through the portal explicitly. They follow its commands directly in some regard, so if they have been ordered to do something by the Witness from the other side of the portal, it's likely that this was an explicit instruction to go after a high-value target, or some piece of infrastructure that we might need. Where they'll pop up is also unknown, but hopefully we'll get a bit more information about that in a future livestream. Something else that has been noted is that the Witnesses' armies are opening up methods by which they can send troops into the last city, but unfortunately for them, and fortunately for us, in doing so they've also made themselves vulnerable. This has allowed Guardians to access portals that let them board the Pyramid Fleet vessels momentarily to strike back, and you'll actually do this in Onslaught, at the beginning of every 6th and the end of every 10th wave. By the way, there are 50 of them in a full onslaught activity, so buckle up, it's going to get harder as you go. With those opportunities, as we enter the Pyramid Vessel, we can take out high-value targets or damage them using sparks of light that we'll be able to generate as we enter. It's something which gives us the idea that we are indeed fighting back against these invaders, and it has created a sort of double-edged sword dynamic where 
The Witness's forces are striking at us, but we equally have great opportunities to strike back. And one last little detail from the very end. It's a note that, according to the developers, there will be another social space that we get access to in Into the Light, which adds even more credence to the rumors that the old tower from Destiny 1 is going to be returning. It's worth remembering what the old towers were used for as well, which was defense. Predominantly speaking, there was only one tower that we ever experienced, but when it comes to the history of the last city, there were eight towers that were ringed along its wall. Eight of these towers at the very height of the city age, and slowly they started to fall into decay as time went on. I would imagine that this is going to be that moment where we return to the old tower and see it properly repaired in game for the first time. I imagine we'll also get to keep access to the old Destiny 2 tower, but the way that things are working now, we may see more things flooding into this new social space as time goes on, and it'll be a nice nod for anybody who really wants that old social space back. I know that I always have had a very soft spot for the old tower. I think that it is far superior to the new one, and from everything to do with aesthetics, to theme, to just the idea of where we live as the defenders of the last city, it's just a marvelous place. Yes, it totally cut us off from the city, but so did sticking us on the random section of wall we're on now. So, ultimately, yeah, if we can't be down in the streets of the city, interacting with individual civilians, why not return to our old ivory tower where at very least we were able to embrace the mystery and aesthetic of that place. Wonderful as it was, it should be returning unless they surprise us with a completely different social space for some reason. Either way, that is mostly what we learned. Thoughts? So yeah, what they've shown off actually looks neat. I know a lot of people will have been screaming that it's recycled content within the update, but this is also a free update. I was not expecting something completely ridiculous from this. What I would say, though, is that when it comes down to it, they've got the baseline narrative of this lined up neatly. I'm glad that they're actually using the new activity as a means of expressing the narrative, and that it is such a core, important idea in this moment when the Witness is trying to stop us from following it. Attacking the last city just before Final Shape? I mean, it has the potential to be a really powerful story beat, and I hope they deliver on it. Onslaught will help do that as far as the activity is concerned. And yeah, sure, for most people it's just going to be a horde mode or tower defense, but hitting us at home? That's going to be relatively important from a narrative standpoint too. I imagine that when Final Shape is all done and dusted and we do return, it will be one of these moments of great triumph and everyone in the last city will start picking up the pieces and repairing the scrap. That being said, I think there's more that still needs to be revealed. This update is not going to be anything close to the size of the April update according to Bungie, at least that was something that was said at the very beginning when they first said that they were going to do Into the Light in the first place. So. I'm not expecting a huge amount from the narrative side of things. I think that the lore tabs we're going to be getting are probably going to be something nice which will add just a little bit of flavor, but I'm not expecting any crazy additions, I'm not expecting anything ridiculous. I think something else to note here, the big question on my mind at very least, is what are the Taken doing? If the Witness is sending its armies generally with the Hive and the Fallen in Onslaught to attack the last city, and if its expressed goal is to keep us here, then the Taken have got to be looking for something very important. Again, I don't know what that is, we could speculate all day about what that is, but at the end of the day, it's still going to be a moment where we have to sit and watch their movements to really discern it. However, this makes me wonder if they might be sent specifically after certain characters who are critical to getting us through the portal, maybe after Osiris or Marasov. And I think it's important to remember here that they might also be sent after the Veil, it is apparently a key part of the bridge, if I'm remembering everything correctly. Osiris has been talking about using it in that way since the beginning of the Season of the Wish, at very least. So, yeah, maybe they're going to be sent to destroy or disable or recapture it. And if they do successfully do that as the Witness's greater shock troops, then, well, it will have accomplished its objective in another way. It would be a very interesting narrative beat if the entire attack on the last city was actually just to hold us in place so that it could confiscate the veil and prevent us from following it that way. 
This would also align neatly with the witness's objectives, but there's no easy way to tell this. Is this actually going to reverberate and hit home as the kind of meaningful update Bungie wants it to be? Well, I think that's entirely dependent on how the story itself pans out. If this is a kind of one-and-done, one-cutscene type affair, then probably not. I do think that there is absolutely an emotional chord to the last city being attacked and us defending it, but there is something to be said for the idea that we are going to need a little bit more information before I can give you any definitive thoughts. They have the theme down, and I'm so glad that the actual attack on the last city is happening and that it isn't just an image created for hype. I was certainly afraid that was going to be the case, and I know I wasn't alone because I saw that sentiment echoed a lot online. So yeah, this is something where we'll be able to see for ourselves in a bit, I guess. It is a free update, so I'm not expecting anything completely crazy, but from what they've shown off so far, it looks like it'll be decent at very least. I have high hopes, and previous free content updates that we've gotten have been really quite substantial in one way or another. Whilst it wasn't technically completely free, because half of it, including G-Horn, was gated off by $30, the 30th anniversary pack that Bungie created was an example of an excellent content drop that most players got for free. Again, that's free minus the dungeon, because, I mean, Dares of Eternity and the dungeon are not technically linked together, and it's a whole mess. The other example is from way back in the day of The Taken King. April Update came along in one of the darker times of the game's content lifecycle, when practically nothing was happening, and it reinvigorated the Prison of Elders, it added a new light cap, which this update doesn't, but at the time being a new light cap was a much bigger deal. And then also you had a bunch of other stuff being added which was just really cool from the aesthetics point of view of the game. You had things such as taken weaponry and taken armor sets being added in. You had an additional strike and a small story mission that introduced the villain of that strike, Malok. And you got some more interactions with characters such as Eris Morn and Varix the Loyal as a result. So is this going to be something that provides us with a similar scale? Maybe. I think the benefit of an update like this is not necessarily one that is purely for the narrative all the time, it is one that allows players to re-engage with the game on their own terms and have fun with it, which should be the goal of anything right now in gaming. Let's actually have fun. Given that the last city is being invaded though, there is more pressure to make the narrative count, so yeah, we'll see if they can pull that one off. Home being defended is a very powerful thing that you can rally around and I hope that Bungie is able to tap into that narrative theme appropriately and actually land this thing. We'll see more as the live streams next week and the week after will drop, but with all of that being said, that's all from me for today. As we learn more stuff going forward, I will let you know more about it, but this has been the sort of look at the narrative side of Into the Light and what's going on there. The big news, of course, being that yes, the last city is indeed being invaded, and we will be defending it, turrets and all. If you enjoyed this video though, go ahead and leave a like. Also, if you have your own thoughts, go ahead and leave them in the comments section. And if you want more Destiny content, hit subscribe and the bell next to subscribe to turn on those email notifications. Quick note about shorts, thank you for the amazing reception. I'm looking into more feedback about how we can change and improve them as we go. Go ahead and keep leaving it as comments on those shorts as you're getting them. If you aren't seeing my shorts, go ahead and check out the channel. I'm deliberately not sending them to subscriber feeds so we can promote natural growth on those things instead of bumping them artificially and then just watching them die. The results have been pretty fantastic, so if you're not seeing them in your shorts feed, just try scrolling. You'll find them eventually, and hopefully you like the topics. Anyway, know that as per usual, your viewership as always has been quite enough for me, and that in the meantime, my name has been, my name is Bife, Rodasia Adastra. I'll see you, Starside.